Hey everybody, welcome to the Author on Wheels podcast. My name is John Wood and I am affectionately known as Author on Wheels. This is a podcast discussing my books, my life, and my fight to survive. Join us as we have some incredible interviews with some incredible authors. Juan C. Diaz is a graduate of Wilmington University, obtaining a bachelor's degree in psychology, later obtaining his master's in psychology from Walden University. Diaz is also the co-founder of the online art magazine Neon Renaissance. He resides in Newcastle, Delaware with his family. His short stories have been featured in two anthologies, Off With His Head and Humbug. Diaz has also published a novel titled Pulling Me Back. Join us as we sit down with author Juan C. Diaz. Guys, welcome to episode number six of the Author on Wheels podcast. My name is John Wood. I am an author. I'm the author of A Fight to Survive, Disability Devotionals, and the soon-to-be-published author of the Wondering Wheels children's book series focused on disabilities. Welcome back to episode number six of the Author on Wheels podcast. And today, we are in the studio remotely, really, we are talking with author Juan C. Diaz, and Juan is a graduate of Wilmington University, obtaining a bachelor's degree in psychology, later obtaining his master's in psychology from Walden, that's W-A-L-D-E-N, University. He's the co-founder of the online art magazine Neon Renaissance. He resides in Newcastle, Delaware, with his family where he's joining us today. His short stories have been featured in two anthologies, Off With His Head and Humbug. He has also published a novel titled Pulling Me Back. We are blessed to have you on on the show with us today. Juan, how are you, brother? I'm doing great, John. Doing great. Happy to be here. Well, I'm glad you are able to be here with us today and that we didn't have to revert to a live stream or something like that. Technology actually works when you least expect it to. Yeah. But we're going to get on with the question portion of our interview, and then we're just going to talk, if that's okay with you. All right. Okay, so my first question to you is, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, including your book titles, and what led you to writing? Well, as you might have known, as we discussed before, I have a real poverty. I, mm-hmm. I am confined to a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And, you know, I I went through so much school. I, I've been in school since 1988, so they should just give me my doctorate. It's right here. You've been in school for 30 some odd years. And anyway, so what led me to writing is I started to read at a very late age, at age 11, so I didn't know how to read. Uh-huh. I taught myself how to read. So I knew I knew the phonics to the letters. So uh-huh. I taught myself how to read when I was eleven. And I just got so entranced with the world in these books. And I said, I could probably do this. So I just started writing. And That's incredible. Go ahead. The thing is, I can't write fast enough. Mm-hmm. I know there's software, speaking software to help me write. But um for some reason my my, um, my speech pattern can't go as fast as my thoughts, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So what I do is I type my novels with my one right index finger. So you typed your entire novel with your right index finger? Yes. That's incredible. <laughs> you have really adapted and overcome, my friend. Well, when we were growing up, I was, I was, growing, I was growing up in the late 80s, early 90s, and mm-hmm. there wasn't that much emphasis on people with disabilities, so I had to adapt. I had to find a new focus to what people call normal life. 
Right. Yeah. Again, that's incredible. Is there anything else you'd like to say about that before we go on to our next question? No, I'm okay. Okay. <clears throat> what would you say fuels your passion for writing? Uh, just life in general. Like I, I see so much stuff about disabled people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're usually, or we're usually, I can include myself in this, we're usually viewed not in a negative light, but in a light, in a light of pity. And so, my thing is, I want to include people with disabilities in regular, everyday aspects of life. Yes. Like, for example, um, I'm writing a novel. It's called Young Little Man One. And he is a wheelchair down teenager who's a drug dealer. Right. And, and he's also a killer. Wow. But he doesn't kill like a normal person kills. Uh huh. Because he has trouble. With his hands, he finds a way to defend himself by sharpening his teeth. As you know, to the point where he can't even bite his own tongue because if he bites his own tongue, he starts to bleed profusely. Oh. So, whenever he encounters an enemy, he just bites him in the neck. Yikes. That sounds brutal and intense. But he, but he is a drug dealer. Now he wasn't born with a real palsy. What happened was when he was a baby, um, a bullet that was meant for his father was lodged into the baby's head when he was walking towards his father. When he was taking his first step, the bullet oh. hit his father. Was lodged into the baby's head, and that's how he got some little palsy. He survived, but he was wheelchair bound forever. So, but that is, hmm. yeah. So it's a very violent book. My novels are very dark because, well. I faced a lot of adversity in my life, mm -hmm. so I I don't mean to be too dramatic, but I no, but I have really deep scars, and so those scars can be seen in my work. Understandable. So basically, all the with the stuff you see in those books are, are my anger. I mean, is my anger trying to... It rears his head. Right. That's how I cope. Exactly. And honestly, I think, one, everyone has a different coping mechanism. And you're, you're, honestly, your coping mechanism is, you know, unique to you. And it can't be changed. Just like a, just like your writing style can't be changed because it is unique to you. Just like I said on a live stream a couple of weeks ago, everybody has a different writing style that's unique to them. It's like their writing DNA, so to speak. Right. And that that's unique to you. And I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you. You're welcome. So my third question to you would be, what advice would you give those listening who? possibly want to write a book, but are having trouble thinking of ideas or motivating themselves to write? Well, the, the one thing I can say is read everything you can get your hands on. Just constantly read and read and read. And through reading, you can take the writing styles from different writers and create your own. That's what I did. Um, because as a kid, I um, 
you know, nobody wanted to spend time with me at the club. Mm-hmm. You know, then my brother, and my sister, but you know, they had lives, so they had to live their own lives. So, right, I was usually left alone in my teenage years. So, you know, I I read all these books and gathered these different writing styles and created my own. It's kind of like a Frankenstein thing. Right. And, you know, that kind of helps me along with my with um, my writing journey because I, I just published my first autobiography back in March of last year. And also in December, I came out with my second book, which is a religious devotional. It's called Disability Devotionals. And through both of those books, I looked at the manuscript after, afterwards, and I looked at my writing styles, and I was like, I, I looked and I was, I was like confused at some points as to how I came up with certain things or how I wrote certain things in this book or how this was worded in that book. And this goes back to what we were saying earlier. You know, our writing styles are different and our brains as writers and authors are wired differently than, you know, other people who don't, say, write for a living, you know? Yeah. Because we have that brain, that mentality of, Okay, this certain thing happened to us. Let's write about it in our own way. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Exactly. It makes a lot of sense. But once you once you hand that book over to an editor, they they tend to edit the way they see it. And um your voice your voice is gone sometimes. Right. So, you know, that's the worst part of publishing is getting your, you know, handing your work into an editor. But it's a necessary thing because they, they help you improve your writing style. Exactly. And luckily with my first two books, I've been able to publish um, without having to hire an editor because I did my own editing because I kind of knew how to do it from writing classes that I took in high school and, you know, before then. So I was lucky enough to edit my own books and not have to pay that fee of having to edit. Funny story. I remember, well, I think it's funny now because I can laugh at it, but at the time I was really, really angry about it. Mm-hmm. When I published Pulling Me Back, it was with a small publisher called Conglomerate Inc. God bless that publishing company. They took a chance on me, you know. Uh, uh-huh. Anyway, so when I handed Pulling Me Back in, the, you know, the editor, you know, God bless this woman, you know, uh, uh-huh. she said to me, she said, well, we need to change this, this, and this. I'm like, like, no, 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 you can't. You can't say it has to be this way. Otherwise, it's going to work. Right. But I'm like, at the time, at the time, I was very ignorant. At the time, I was like, she's really, really want to work. She's doing her job. She, because I was sort of like brand new to the situation. I, I didn't know. The ins and outs. So, right. I kind of butted heads with the publisher about that, but I had one more lesson. And this is in, in my line of work, you can't be too arrogant, you know, because at that point, I was arrogant. And so, right. You know, my, my work didn't even prove me. But you can't be like that when you're writing. You need to take criticism and you need to take it lightly. Exactly. And, you know, I, I really appreciate you saying that because, you know, with my first book, I was, you know, in a sense the same way, but I'd been writing the thing for two and a half years prior to actually publishing. So, 
I really appreciate those words. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, <clears throat> final question. Go, go ahead. Okay, no, no, go ahead. Final question before we kind of get into and we can kind of have a discussion afterwards. Um, where can our listeners contact you in regards to your books and hearing your story? Uh, right now, I have a, a Facebook page. It's under Juan Diaz. And if you have trouble finding me, if you follow John Woods, I'll run to his friend this on Facebook. I also have a Twitter called mm -hmm. a War Diaz, but I'm rarely on my Twitter. So most likely you'll be able to reach me on Facebook. Oh, John, if you can't find me, because my name is so common. My name is like freaking John Smith. Exactly. You know? And what's going to happen is when I get this interview, uh, when I get all the information ready, what I'll do is anything for your, say, the copies of your books that are on Amazon or any of that, they will all be listed and linked in the um, comments and the description of this episode. One thing, one thing I have to say, um, pulling me back, the original, is a, yes. because... Um, that was actually picked up by Strange Press, which is, you know, an imprint of Simon and Schuster, and the title was changed to A Tale from West Side of Wilmington. So right now, one of me back is out of print, but Tales from West Side of Wilmington will be released uh, sometime in 2021. Okay, great. That that answers part of my other or part of my last question. Thank you so much. But but I do have a poetry book called Wheels for Feet that's in print right now via Amazon. And that link will be in the uh, in the description of this episode, guys. So whenever you click on this episode, you'll find it in the information below, along with all of our author's information from today's interview. And everything that we discussed will also be available for those who want it. We will link it on our website. It will be available on our Facebook page. And guys, this has been a really interesting interview with author Warren C. Diaz. And Juan, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us today for the Author on Wheels podcast. Before we go, you can find the Author on Wheels Facebook page. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And also, you can follow me personally on Twitter and Instagram, as well as on, in, on um, Telegram by typing in John Wood. You can also subscribe to the Author on Wheels YouTube channel. And you can go to our website, which will be all linked in the information of this episode. But before we go, guys, again, we'd like to thank you, Juan, for joining us today for the Author on Wheels podcast. Is there anything you'd like to say before we sign off, my friend? I'd like to say God bless you for having me. You know, thank you for this dream come true, basically. Because, you know, I never thought I could get to this uh, part of my life where I could uh, actually sit here and write my thoughts. You know? Yes. And guys, th this is the reason that we do these interviews with people like you, Juan, because we like to sit down and hear the story from the person. Not the disability or the circumstance, but from the person. Because there's there's certain things like, okay, this is gonna be weird. But, but I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, and then I said, you know, there, there are racial slurs, and then there is a universal slur. He said, a universal slur. I said, yeah. I said, um, I mean, the whole you know, no matter where you go to, what country you go to, what country you go to, and people know that you're disabled, they tend to look down on you. Right. So, 
I I said against the universal slur. Okay, and that is mm -hmm. no matter where you go, you can go, you know, to the moon. Somebody will probably look down on you. Exactly. I'm not trying to be negative, but it's no. And that that's the other thing that we can that we discuss, you know. Certain people have different mindsets of things and as authors we have we have to channel that in for or that that or that mindset into our writing. And that's why your writing style and my writing style they're both different. They're both very eclectic. And that's why we as authors do the things we do and have the opportunities that we do, because if you look at it other people look at us as authors and they say, oh, he's written this or they've written that or done that. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're probably just starting out right now. We're not as, you know, famous as, you know, J.K. Rowling or Roald Dahl or any of those other people that have written books for 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 years. Right. Crazy, but, you know, it's, it's not about the money. But... Right. The money, the money, the money will be great. But if if I can if I can reach that disabled kid, and you know, and he reads my stuff, he's like, I can see myself in this. Yes. But I did my job. You did, and that, and honestly, that inspires me to you know, continued moving forward and releasing my children's uh, series, uh, Wondering Wheels, I'm, which I really... I'm do, Go ahead. I'm doing a children's book as well. I forgot to tell you. Um, it's, it's kind of funny because it's based on me and my best friend. My best friend, he's an able-bodied person. His name is Marquis Dupree. And so... He's very smart with technology, so I said, hey, I should do uh, a children's book where you create a time machine for me, and my time machine is basically a wheelchair, okay? Okay. So these kids will go back in time every time they have a report. Basically, it's like Bill and Ted for kids, basically. But instead of a phone booth, they use his electric wheelchair. I need to hear more about this at some point, buddy. Thank you. Wow. That that is Okay. I'm impressed. That sounds amazing. I want more information. But guys, thank you all so much for inter or for listening today. Juan, thank you again for joining us. This has been the Author on Wheels podcast, episode number six. And today's guest has been author Juan C. Diaz. You can find uh, the Author on Wheels on Facebook or go to our website, all linked in the description. But before we go, this is the Author on Wheels reminding you that your life is a story. And I'm imposing the question of how are you going to write the next chapter? See you guys soon. Thank you so much, Juan. All right. Thank you. The Author on Wheels podcast would like to thank our guest today, author Juan C. Diaz, for joining us on the Author on Wheels podcast to discuss his life story and his books, period. Thank you, Juan.